and welcome to the Watkins Museum of History. My name is Miss Amanda and this is Miss Kaylee. Hello. And we are here again this month to do our digital version of Tiny Tours. Tiny Tours is our little story time for ages pre-K. And we just wanted to give you a digital version if you wanted to stay safe and at home. So this month we are talking about our exhibit called Community Construction, which is all about the different beautiful buildings and the people who built the beautiful buildings in Lawrence. We have an incredible architectural history and we really want you to come check it out before it closes soon. So we talk a lot about the different details that are on buildings and the different people that built them. But let's talk a little bit about our building and what was taken to create our building. One of the most wonderful artifacts of the Watkins Museum of History is the building. When you're here, take some time to look at the ceiling. We have these pieces of the ceiling from when we had construction, as well as these historic nails. They are really interesting ways to look at what it took to construct this beautiful building. If you look, there is a metal wire that attaches all of these pieces to give it more strength. Can you imagine creating all of these things out of plaster? Plaster is like sand and water that's very fine mixed together with something that's a binder, which is like a way of saying glue, and that it turns into something strong. Now take your time when you're walking around and see if you can find these flowers or these beautiful braids on the ceiling in the second and third floor. Isn't it fun learning all about how the buildings around us are built? This is a blueprint. It's used as a design and it's created by a person called an architect. Let's read a fun book about a special architect, Robin Boyd Architect. Robin Boyd Architect. Written and illustrated by Mari Koot. Robin Boyd lived at the National University high up on a ledge of the architecture school. Her nest overlooked a skyline of spectacular shapes. And each day while she studied domes and spires and minarets, she listened to the class through the window. When I grow up, I'd like to be an architect, thought Robin. As she listened, she learned there was much more to architecture than building. There were complex ideas like, are round nests always best? And think outside the circle. And the biggest question of all, what comes first, the nest or the egg? It turned her thinking upside down. Robin was the first boy to go to university and she wanted to do well. So she set to work practicing all the important shapes like circles, triangles, rectangles, and domes. I can think outside the circle, thought Robin, and she turned her own nest upside down. It's a dome, she discovered, and she added another small dome on top. It was as good as any on the skyline. But where does my egg fit in, she wondered. Next, she tried a tall, thin triangle carefully placing each twig higher and higher until she had made a towering spire. But was it too pointy? An address for an egg? 
Robin coiled circles into cylinders, cones stretched, squares into rectangles and cubes, and tilted triangles up into pyramids. Before long, she was making towers with turrets and battlements with parapets. But was it all too grand for an egg? She practiced all the important architectural features like archways and entrances, keystones and columns, buttresses and balconies. She built capitals with curly cues, bridges with balustrades, pedestals, patterns and plinths. She soon learned that a nest is not a nest if there's nowhere for an egg to rest. Robin flew over the university and far beyond. The more she built, the more she learned about shape and space, symmetry and scale. She practiced pagodas and perfected pavilions. But was this the best nest for an egg? She did homework and field work and some pretty fancy stick work. She worked on her towers for hours and hours. She mixed textures and colors, tried stacking cantilevers and tilt, but found towers quite windy once built. Robin spiraled all the way up on the inside and spiraled all the way down on the outside. But was this the right shape for her nest? She soon realized there were endless possibilities for shape and design. So what was the best shaped nest for an egg? And then out of the blue, the idea came to her. Exactly the right shape for an egg is egg-shaped. Suddenly her work became truly egg-citing. She designed egg-extraordinary apartments and egg-spectational homes and now she understood three very important things. One, a bird can live anywhere but an egg needs to nest. Thinking outside the circle can lead to excellent ideas. The egg comes first. By the end of her studies, Robin had become an expert builder and an exceptional designer. Famous for outdoor places and indoor spaces full of sunshine, breezes, shelter, and shade. Architecture is like an egg, thought Robin, full of exciting possibilities. Each gave her the idea for a book on her career. Perhaps she'd call it Great Expectations by Robin Boyd, architect. All right, another great part of this exhibit is the awesome tools that we have to show how the buildings were actually built and made. And one thing that you can do when you come see us is come look at these tools and see if you recognize any of them maybe from today. Yes, and it's always so interesting to look at the different artifacts that we have that just tell the story of our history as a town. Well, I can't end today without telling you that we really want you to come and get our brand new coloring book, which is all about the town and the architecture of the Watkins Museum of History. Thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with us today. We're so grateful to see you. And if you have any questions, please email me at aburkhart at watkinsmuseum.com. And we hope to see you soon. Thank you, Miss Kaylee. You're welcome. Thank <laughs> you, Miss Amanda. Bye. Bye.